Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. Today we are going to be working on four different cards using the stamp set from the November Simon Says Stamp 2020 card kit Big Thanks Autumn and that is the same name as the the stamp set. And I really love the big flower stamp in this stamp set so I wanted to do it a few different ways. So we're going to start off here by blending some Distress Ink on some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I will have all my uh, ink colors and later on Copic colors listed over on my blog or you can see them here on the screen if you want to pause the video. So, uh, you know, get yourself a cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever time of day you're you're watching this and settle in and um, I'm going to show you four different things. So first we're going to start off with doing the backgrounds. So like I said, this one is Distress Oxide on Bristol Smooth. And actually, that's the only background. I'm sorry. That's the only background that we're going to use. So the other papers we're going to use, we're going to use Arteza um, watercolor paper. I think that it's the Expert watercolor paper. We're going to use some black mixed media paper. And then we're going to use some Nina Classic Crest paper in 80-pound uh, stock. And those are going to be what we're going to stamp our um, image on from the stamp set. Now on um, three of those, on all of them except for the, the Nina one, we are going to uh, heat emboss the image on there. And we're going to use Nuvo's uh, blush, copper, copper blush. Everything will be linked down in the, the supply list. To, uh, we're going to use that on all three of the stamp sets to emboss them with. And <laughs> at first I did the uh, the Bristol Smooth uh, Oxide background longer. I was going to do a slimline card. And then when I went to make the cards, I totally forgot I was going to use a slimline card. And I was like, why are the, all these things too low, long? And I, I cut them down. And anyway, by the time I re remembered what I was going to do, it was like too late. And I'd already made all my card bases and I'd made them for uh, landscape five by seven cards. So that was that was that plan went awry. But anyway, so I um, stamped everything with Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. But first, before I stamped on this ink blended panel, I wanted to make sure that it was good and dry. So I went over it with my anti-static uh, powder and then I just dumped on some embossing uh, powder in and uh, see if it was any of it sticks. Some of it did stick, so I did hit it with my heat tool again. You want to make sure that your ink blending is good and dry so you don't have any stray embossing powder sticking where you don't want it to stick. So once you get all of your your panels uh, stamped and everything you want to uh, just make sure you heat up your heat tool until it's good and hot and then go to your paper and just uh, hit everything until you see it turn smooth and shiny and that way you know that everything is all heat embossed. So these cards did did take a bit to to do well because there was you know some drying time uh in there my actual footage though was right at two hours oh so we're going to start with the uh black mixed media and i'm using these uh metallic gym i think they're gym colors of kiritake uh watercolors and this some this stuff, I'm not going to do any shading. I do do a little bit of mixing, um, but basically it's just kind of straight painting in colors. Um, and like I said, a little bit of mixing. And I didn't use any other colors other than what's in this palette. And so you know that you can see that there's some bright colors in this palette. But I think it worked. And yes, I do know that I did miss a leaf underneath the smaller um sunflower I think these are or whatever flowers kind of flowers these are I did miss a leaf actually I missed that leaf on three of my panels only on the Copic coloring did I did it finally dawn on me that oh that's another maple leaf there <laughs> I thought about trying to go back and color on the other ones but the, I was like nah well you know once it's all done and everything it really 
is a little bit, you know, hard to discern. The one of the watercolor backgrounds, um, or the watercolor background with the Arteza, I I'm, I may try to go back and fix that. The ink blended one, I don't think it's really that noticeable. I did not color two other leaves on that one, and but on the black, I don't really think it's it's noticeable at, at all. Especially after the splatter goes on, yeah, I, I don't really think that that's that's all that noticeable. So, um, yeah, this is this video is going to have a ton of coloring in it. So I did speed it up quite a bit. Uh, so as you can see, it's a 23 minute video and I had two hours of footage. So I did speed everything up quite a bit, um, but there is a lot of coloring. So if you don't like watching the coloring, feel free to um, move along to the end and see how uh, all these cards are put together. So basically I do some stenciling at the end and using some glacier paste and just using some uh, ink blending with the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo ink. But it was, I had a lot of fun, you know, trying all these uh, different techniques and blending these colors and trying to get, you know, the colors of fall foliage and, and how you know, on one leaf, you can have multiple colors, which is just so pretty. I, I just I, I really love the the colors on the leaves this time of year. It, it's just amazing to me how it can turn from green to bright red. There's this one tree in as I'm driving down uh, 205 in, in Rockwall that it is the brightest color red that it looks fake. It looks like it's painted. It, it looks artificial. It is so bright red but I know that that's a tree and it's real and it's green <laughs> very green during uh, the warmer months but it is the most gorgeous color of bright red and I just think that's so awesome nature is just uh, fascinating you know what what it could do with plants and flowers and leaves and and animals and nature and everything so uh, I think it's just wonderful Okay, so on this Bristol one, I decided I wanted to remove a bit of that background color to help my other colors, you know, pop off of that page. So I'm just going in with uh, clean, clear water and then and letting it set for just a second and then dabbing it up with a paper towel just to lift a little bit of that color. And then so this panel, I am going to color in with zig clean color real brush markers so i will go directly to the paper with uh, the darkest color of the zig that i'm going to use and i will pull it out and then i will go in with a lighter color on the the tips of this i, I just pull it out with a little bit of a damp brush and uh, do that with both of the flowers i think i do come back and add a, another layer just to get a little bit more uh, contrast for the bottom of the petals and the petals that are kind of hidden behind uh, other petals. So, um, and I will try to, you know, just show you one of everything and then, you know, move along. Uh, here I'm just coloring in these berries. I didn't really think that those were, uh, you know, anything that really needed a whole lot of finesse to them. So I just colored those straight in. And so here I'm trying a, a green and a yellow together. I think that blended together really pretty. Probably could have used a little bit more green in the bottom just to have that little bit more pop of that color. Um, but so I'm just trying different colors, mixing them together, thinking about what, you know, I've seen about town in the different uh, trees and everything and just try to, you know, replicate that the the best that I can and I, I really love the uh the dark burgundy with the with the yellow but it, with the green it uh it really really looks pretty I will get to that one I think here in a in a second that is that other maple leaf that have a color yeah yeah so I'll go in with this burgundy color I think it's carmine red actually and like I said I will have all the colors over on my on my coordinating blog post for this, which will be linked down in the video description below. But I think though that blend uh, turned out really well. I so said this was just a lot of fun to to get all these different shades to pop together and everything. And those uh, 
so many different kinds of leaves on here. Those ones with little sections, I, I couldn't quite figure out how to uh, color them. I color them, I think, a little bit different in each one of my panels. And see, um, I want to say the the one that was probably the most challenging was probably the, the straight watercolor maybe yeah probably the straight watercolor because I, I just got these um, Arteza watercolors and so I'm still you know learning them and figuring out you know how much water I need and you know what colors go together and how do you know do I do a, a dry technique a wet technique you know you've got to really you know work with your mediums and experiment with them and get used to them uh, until you're you know totally comfortable with them and know how they're going to react and everything this is the Arteza watercolors um, but in the 60 I, I bought the box of 60 which was not a large investment as far as watercolors go because watercolors can be very expensive and I know these are probably are not the best watercolors but for a beginner I, I got a lot of colors at a great price and I'm learning a new medium so if I you know decide I really like this and I want to stay with it then you know maybe I'll graduate into uh, you know more fancy watercolors I don't know I think for a card maker though that that these are are just fine I'm not a go to a canvas paint a whole picture kind of person so I, I like these small card size things so probably I will just stick with these now I did invest in the Kiritake uh, metallics and I will use the the starry nights at the very end the gold out of there to do the splatter on all my cards those are a little bit of investment not bad so um, if you want some metallics uh, you know they're they're not bad Altenew makes some metallics too that are um, I've seen other people use and they seem to really like them and their their uh, pictures look really pretty so um, that's another one to look at if you're interested in metallics because on dark cardstock, the metallics just are so pretty. And like I said I, I wanted to get the Starry Nights because that's different shades of gold to do uh, different splatters with. So I just used the gold that I thought went well with all three of my panels, so I wasn't uh, making a mess, cleaning it up, making a mess, cleaning up, using different ones on all my panels. So uh, yeah, that that was that was that decision. Okay, so what next? Um, I will have an unboxing video of a Gina K kit that I bought and it came in yesterday. So um, I am going to film that next and have that. And it is a Christmas card kit. So I think I'm going to start my Christmas official Christmas card series with that. And I'm, I'm so excited to get into Christmas cards. I wanted to get through a few uh, fall and Thanksgiving thankful uh, themed cards because the Simon kit was totally beautiful. I, I really love that. I did get some Echo Park stuff that I uh, used in some backgrounds here and there on some other things that I did, but I didn't really do a whole lot of filming with that one. And, and that was such a, a pity too, because that those were some really beautiful uh, uh, papers there. I think, uh, it, it they always are very pretty and I, I love their papers but time 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 I wish there was more of it <laughs> nope don't we all but uh well maybe not so much in this year this anyway um but I am uh, looking forward to getting into Christmas cards and I still need to do my November uh one for the Christmas craft creations challenge blog that I am a, a member of. So, ah, so many things to do and uh, so many decisions to, to make on the construction of the winery. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, back to the card here real quick. And now I'm starting on the Copic coloring one. And I started with this one combination there and 
it was it was not working well for me. I, I had to add in a fourth color uh, because I needed another middle transition color because it just it just quite what wasn't quite working. And so I will add that in here in a second. And uh, that will start looking a lot better. I didn't really like the way it looked. So yeah, there I, was, there I added in that other color. And then it, it really started coming together uh, nicely. And by this time, this was the last one that I did. So I was uh, starting to get a bit um, ready to be done with this project. And so I, did, I was a little bit messy here and there. So I ended up having to uh, do a pretty... A heavy outline around um, the whole image with uh, some gray markers. I think I used the neutrals or the toners. I think the neutral grays I used. And so, um, but it did cover, color up my uh, my messy coloring. So <laughs> that was that was good. It was this leaf right here that really got messy because you know reds bleed like crazy, and I I couldn't get it to to go out to the yellow that I wanted to. I kept scrubbing and scrubbing and and adding different colors and uh yeah it just it just started bleeding and it it bled out. And then I started trying to push it back with a, a zero and it it got even worse really. And so I was just like at that point I'm over it. I'm just gonna do an outline around it and I actually, I think kind of think it really made it, you know, kind of pop off the page. So uh, it's kind of maybe a happy accident. I really love this color combination I did on these leaves. And so I, I repeated it a few times across the uh, image with uh, some of the different leaves because I, I just really loved how those colors uh, came out. So pretty. And I said, we'll have everything over on the blog if you're interested. And I'm really interested in what you think. Well, which one of these was your favorite? And, you know, what new mediums are y'all working on? Um, and are you wanting to experiment with any new mediums? So I'm, I'm always wanting to push myself and learn something new. And so that's why I recently, you know, invested in the watercolors and things. But um, my, you know, love is Copic coloring. And I've been doing that for a while. But please do tell me which, which card that you liked and maybe a little bit about why you liked it, you know, um, the colors or uh, the overall way I put together the card because I did put together each of them a, a tad bit different, although they're similar, uh, except for the black one. That one's kind of just totally different. And I really kind of struggled with what I wanted to do with that one. And that one's probably... As far as the overall card, my, my least favorite. Um, I think my favorite is probably the Copic one. My second favorite is probably the one with the oxide background. Um, but that's just me. So I, I want to know what, what you all think. And, um, you know, if there's anything that you want to see in the Christmas cards, uh, let me know. I would be happy to, uh, you know, get some feedback from you know, you folks that watch my stuff and, and what you might want to, you know, see any kind of uh, techniques or you, the use of uh, stencils or paste or uh, ink blending or embossing folders. There's some great new uh, 3D embossing folders. And um, Simon Says Stamp just came out with some in their Holly Jolly release. And so I, yeah, I wasn't going to buy anything else, but I did. I bought, I bought uh, a couple of those embossing folders. and I think a couple of other things off of their Holly Jolly Rays because there was a lot of really cute things in there. So yeah, I did buy a couple of more things and I did get my notification that it shipped already. Their shipping is getting way faster, which is so nice, uh, especially you know, through the, you know, onset of COVID, well, they weren't shipping at all. And then when they started shipping, they were so far behind that, you know, it took weeks to get anything. So now I think they're getting things out within days and they're in Ohio and I'm in Texas. So it takes about, uh, 
three days for me to get three to four days and it comes uh, USPS. Oh, here's those starry night uh, colors. So I just put a lot of water in there and stirred it up really good. You want to stir those up really good and get that shimmer powder, mica powder, whatever it is in there that makes it sparkly. Get that stuff all mixed in there. And um, I just went to town splattering things. And then uh, in the end, I just took my paintbrush and just dabbed around a little bit. I wanted a few uh, bigger spots of, of gold. So yeah, I just dabbed around a little bit. And sometimes it's hard to get it to, you know, when you're flicking, just to get it to go exactly where you want it to go. So um, I did all the insides the same. I just used some of the other images and stamped it in that vintage photo oxide uh, distressed ink. Uh, lost my turn of thought. Okay, so this is a layering stencil from uh, Tim Holtz. It is called Flourish. And I'm using some Nouveau embellishment mousse in copper. And I'm using one of the Nouveau little uh, uh, palette knives here. It is those one of those silicone things. And um, I really liked it. I think it worked really well for uh, spreading that around. This is actually my first time to use it. I bought them and this is my actually my first time to use them. And so on my embellishment mousse, you may have noticed that there was uh, something over the top other than the foil that uh, comes on there. It is press and seal. If you put press and seal over all your paste, glacier paste especially, mousses, anything like that, put some press and seal on there, put your lids on tight, and they will stay good a lot longer than if you don't put anything over there to seal it. And also using that, you won't seal your product shut like I have done a couple of times. Um, but anyway, so this is the one that I just used the Distress Ink and ink blended that uh, stencil on. So now we're on to the assembly of the cards. I used my uh, Misty Creative Corner uh, little angle thing there that uh, came in that kit just to get my uh, sentiment straight and I used the big thanks on that came on the stamp set and ju on just that one and I foam taped uh, quite a few things up just to give some dimension the only one that's just totally flat is the black one and again just using that to get that straight on there Oh, no, I did use the big thanks on that one. I forgot. I forgot. Two of them I used the big thanks on. Then two of them I used a sentiment that was on that sheet that came in the kit. I just cut a, uh, down a couple of those and I uh, used them on the front of the card. And then, uh, oh, the, the that background is Nina Desert Storm on that card. So that's it. That's all the cards for today. Again, please let me know which one is your favorite. And I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.